Hello, Pastor Peters here from Hagerman Baptist Church. And we're kind of reviewing last Sunday's message and then putting an application out there uh, for us to think about some things. It was called, the, the message was called The Zeal of the Zealot, talk, talking about Simon the Zealot, who was an apostle. We don't have much information about him, but we had information that we delivered Sunday about who the Zealots were. And they were this political group who were uh, much maligned with the Romans and trying to uh, resist the Roman government. And uh, so when we started the sermon, we talked about what a person is uh, on their own and who they are under the power of the master. And to illustrate that, we talked about this, this uh, violinist who uh, touted that he was going to demonstrate a $20,000 violin. And so he shows up at the music hall and he does his concert. And at the very end of the concert, he smashes the violin. And the stage manager came out and said, it's okay, that was a $20 violin that he was playing. He will now come out and demonstrate what the $20,000 violin sounds like. And to most people, they couldn't tell the difference. So the difference was this $20 violin versus the $20,000 violin was in whose hands it was in. He was in the hands of a master violinist. Well, we are in the hands of the master. And so we'll allude to that a little bit later, but. I want you to think about this, that anything good from us that comes out from us is not us, but it's of God. And so anything good that came out of Simon the Zealot or Matthew or you know any of the rest of them, John or Peter or Andrew or Bartholomew, any of those guys, it was not them. It was not about their background. It was not what uniquely qualified them to be an apostle. <laughs> Any of these guys were not uniquely qualified to be an apostle. And there's nothing that uniquely qualifies you to be a Christian outside of the fact that God's grace was poured on you, allowing you to understand the great gospel and receive it by faith. And you accepted a gift, the gift of eternal life. And in and through that, you also received along with that, the Holy Spirit who d did something for you to change, transform you from the inside out. And so I'd like to talk about that as I was thinking about anything the good that comes from us is really not of us, but is of God. I was thinking about the Apostle Paul and his testimony in Philippians chapter three, because he says it this way, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit, rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. He goes on to say, though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. And how can he say that? Well, then he lists his credentials. Listen to these credentials. I was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel. I'm from the tribe of Benjamin. I'm a Hebrew of the Hebrews, Jewish through and through. Concerning the law, a Pharisee. They were at the very highest part, if you consider the law. Concerning zeal, get this. You can talk about other people, but of all people, I had zeal to the point that I even killed people for what I believe. I persecuted the church. Concerning righteousness of the law, blameless. And so you would expect with that testimony, he would go on to say, and because of those things that I have done, then I am at the top of the heap or whatever. No, that's what you hear from the world. But what you hear from Paul is this. <laughs> but what things were gained to me, in other words, all those things that I accomplished, those I have counted loss for Christ. He said, yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish 
translate rubbish, cow pies, or whatever you want to call, call it. Uh, it. It's in the King James, it's called dung. <laughs> so I, I, I count them as dung, rubbish, in order that I may win Christ. You know, a couple verses later, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, uh, that I may know Christ. That's Paul's aim. I'm, everything else that's happened to me doesn't count one iota. It counts as a pile of dung that I may win Christ. So if you think of Paul, you think of the accomplishments of Paul. He doesn't count the accomplishments of Paul. He counts them as God has done something in me to give me a zeal for the gospel and I am something because God did something in my life. That's the only reason that uh, he has anything to brag. In fact, he says, here's the only thing I can brag about, the cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ crucified. That's what I'm gonna talk about. And he does. Now let me, let me go back to the illustration of the violin. So this master violinist picks up this $20 violin. The violin is nothing in and of itself has no claims to fame. It's something that, you know, as, as he stomped on it at the end of the concert and de destroyed it, it was no big loss because it was only a $20 violin. You and I are not $20,000 violins. We're $20, $20 violins. There's nothing good inside us except that God loved us and God gave us his gift. And along with the gift of salvation, he also giveth, gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now think about this. Not only is God the, the violinist, the, uh, the one who knows how best to use us, he's the one who made us. And so God who made us knows very well what he was doing when he put us together. And he put us together in such a way that we would be specially suited to be used in the way that God would use us. We're not suited to, de to determine how best we might be used. So maybe the next time somebody asks you to do something in, in ministry, you might be tempted to say, oh, I'm not qualified for that. I, I don't have any experience. I don't have two years of college in that, uh, that topic. Uh, I don't have any experience in, in this or that or that. But hold on, it's not about you. It's about God putting you in a situation where you, yeah, quite frankly, feel like you're not qualified. That's the point. He needs to get us to the point that it's not about us. And so it might be something completely out of your uh, strong suit. But God says, I have a plan for you. I know how best to use you. And it's in our submission to his plan that when we say, God, you do whatever you will in me. I don't see how this is gonna end up for good, but you do whatever you want with me. That is the secret. As we submit to him, and then God starts using that submission and he starts doing something inside us. You know what happens? God gives us a burden for ministry that we never would have had before because it was all about us. But when we submit to his plan, he gives us a burden for a certain ministry. And we start seeing not our own abilities, but God's abilities through us shine through. And you know what that produces? Zeal. It gives us zeal. We're not zealous because I can do this. I can do this on my own. I have the abilities. I have the gifts. I have the talents to accomplish that. No, when we submit to God's plan, we're saying, God, I am nothing. I'm a $20 violin. But you use me and mold me and make me into what you want me to be. And I'll be glad to do that. And when that happens, zeal comes from 
within. It's not something we gin up or get, you know, act excited about. It's something a genuine enthusiasm to do the work of God. He can do that through us, and He will. So I, I, I pray that you would get to the point of saying, admitting the truth, I'm a $20 violin. <laughs> and then allow God to do something that only God can do through you. I trust that's helpful. And uh, now we just have to do the hard work of going and applying all that. But may God bless you as you take, take that on and submit to his plan. And so until next time, Hagerman Baptist Church, Signing out.